والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحل لكم ليلة الصيام الرفث إلى نسائكم هن لباس لكم وأنتم لباس لهن Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have begun a series, a couple of lectures on the family dynamics. And in the first session, several weeks ago, we talked about the importance of the family. And then we talked about the roles and the responsibilities that everyone has within a family. And tonight, inshallah, we will be discussing some of the things that are a form of destruction for the family. What destroys the family? What are some challenges that most families deal with today that cause the breakup of the family and the lack of love and lack of commitment within the family. We mentioned that the family is supposed to be a safe space. It's supposed to be a healthy environment, a healthy place where every member of the family should feel loved, should feel honored, should feel respected, they should feel the tranquility and the compassion. Allah says in the Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا One of the main purposes of having a family, one of the main purposes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created pairs, the male and the female, is لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا For the purpose of sukoon, for the purpose of tranquility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be at the, in a state of tranquility, in a state of calmness, while we are with our families. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And it's also a place of love and a place of mercy. In another verse, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا the family is supposed to be a source of qurrata a'yun, a source of joy, a source of happiness for the members involved in the family. And similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that the husband and the wife are supposed to be like libas for one another, like clothing for one another. أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ لَيْلَةَ الصِّيَامِ الرَّفَثُ إِلَىٰ نِسَائِكُمْ هُنَّ لِبَاسٌ لَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لِبَاسٌ لَهُنْ How is that supposed to be? What's the purpose of clothing? When you wear clothes, what is the purpose of the clothing? One is that it gives you protection. It protects you from the weather, from the cold weather, from the hot weather. Second is that it conceals your private parts. It conceals your body. If there's something that you want to hide in your body, use your clothes to cover it. And third, it's a form of beautification. Your clothes are a form of beauty for you. People are beautified by the clothes that they're wearing. So subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses the family, the husband with the wife and the wife with the husband as a form of libas. Hunna libasun lakum. وَأَنْتُمْ لِبَاسٌ لَهُنْ Because this is the role of the family. You're supposed to protect one another. You're supposed to, you're supposed to conceal the faults. If someone has a, done something wrong, you cover up for this person. You don't come and expose this person. And you beautify one another. You bring out what's good, what's beautiful in one another. But we see that when a family is broken, when a family dynamics are gone, then you will start finding that there is no love, there is no sukoon, tranquility, there is no compassion within the household. 
And when a household is broken, it's not just going to be the house that's broken. A lot of times, couples, they're getting divorced or they're fighting. They come and they say, you know what, we're just, our, our marriage isn't working anymore. Whenever there's a divorce, whenever there is a breakup within a family, that means that the first who pays the price are the relatives and the children and everyone involved in the family. Because a family is, it's a series, several relationships. You have the relationship of the husband and the wife, the relationship of the parents and the children, the siblings with one another. Whenever there's a breakup, all of these relationships are going to be tested. And not only the family, but in fact society as a whole will suffer whenever a family is broken up. Because every single member in the family requires a needs of a father, for example. Every single person needs a mother. Whenever there's a breakup, whenever there's a divorce, you find a lot of times that the children, they're separated from their parents, they're separated from their father. Now there's no father in the house. Now there's no mother in the house. Now there's that relationship that keeps the family secure and loving and compassionate. And that relationship that brings the tranquility within the family does not exist anymore. And this is why, my dear brothers and sisters, Islam focuses on the family. When Islam focuses on the family, when Islam says get married and preserve the marriage and you have roles and responsibilities and duties within the family, it's not just because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to get involved in our lives. No. Because if a marriage is broken, that will lead to society being broken. If a marriage and the family is not fulfilling its duties, if people don't find comfort and serenity and peace and tranquility within the family, then they're going to start searching for it outside the family. And that's where you have a broken society. That's where you will find a broken community. This is why from an Islamic perspective, it is the duty of society to make sure that the marriages are, are healthy. See, one of something that makes Islam different from other religions is a very important concept. And this is the concept of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. Al-amr bil ma'roof wa nahi al-munkar. In Islam, we all have a duty to enjoin the good. Meaning if you see someone not doing something correctly, you come and you tell this person. If you see someone doing something wrong, if you see someone jumping off a bridge, do you come and say, you know what? I have nothing to do with this. This is everyone, everyone, they make their own decisions, they do whatever they want. No. From an Islamic perspective, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعْ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ You are all shepherds and you are all responsible. You all, you all have responsibilities. So even if I see a couple that I know them, a family, and they're going through difficulties right now, should I just sit on the sideline and say, you know what, let me not get involved? No. From an Islamic perspective, we have to, every single member of the community has to do whatever they can to try to preserve the family. Because when a family is broken, don't just look at it as one family here. No, when that family is broken, you will find that slowly everyone in the community will pay the price. And society will break apart as a result. This is why the hadith says, إِصْلَاحُ ذَاتِ الْبَيْنِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ عَامَّةِ الصَّلَاةِ والصيام. Look at the beauty of Islam. This is a hadith from Amir al-Mu'mineen, from Rasulullah as well. إِصْلَاحُ ذَاتِ الْبَيْنِ If you find two people, two brothers, two family members, two of the mu'mineen, doesn't have to be husband and Islah that al bringing two together. If you are able to bring peace between them, the reward is how much? Islah that al khayrun min ammat salati wa siyam. What does that mean? That means that if you're able to bring two people together, two people they're not talking, they're they're upset with one another. You bring them together, the reward is greater than all of salah and all of fasting. Imagine that. This is the beauty of Islam. 
This is the beauty, this is the akhlaq that the religion of Islam instills within us. And if you see a couple that have children, that have a family, if you see them, they're on the brink of divorce, if you see that they're going through trouble, you have a duty to try to get involved. You have a duty. Now some people, they just want to get involved to hear the gossip, to hear what's going on. Oh yeah, did you hear? They're upset with one another, they're fighting. Some people, they're in it just for that. But no, Islamically, we are supposed to try to bring people together. And Allah says in the Quran, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقًا بَيْنَهُمَا فَابْعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا If you are afraid that they're fighting with one another, a couple, a husband and wife, newlyweds, they've been married for a year or whatever, if you're afraid that they're, they're, they're shiqaq, they're fighting with one another, send a hakam, a judge from her family and a judge from his family, إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِصْلَاحًا يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُمَا If they want islah, if they want reform, Allah will give them the reform. Sometimes some people they say, I don't want reform. I don't want to find a solution. They shut all of the doors. Allah says, if they want it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيمًا خَبِيرًا And here, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the role of the community. This is the role of the elderly in the community. And it is also the role of the mosques. The mosque is not just a place where we go and we pray and we you know, listen to lectures. The mosque is supposed to be a hub. The mosque is supposed to be a place where we find solutions to our problems. If a person is going through a problem, come to the mosque and try to find the solution. Try to bring people together and it's the job of the clergy. Sometimes some people they think that the shaykh or the sayyid in the masjid let me call them when I want to get married and I'll call them when I want to get divorced. No questions asked, let them give me the divorce, let them give me the marriage. Now marriage, yes, we welcome it. Whoever wants to get married will do the marriage. Of course, marriage also requires some people, they go and they say, Allah, let's get married. Do you know what responsibilities you're getting yourself into? Do you know what duties that you have when you get into this relationship? Because you're entering into a contract. Marriage is a contract. Are you going to go sign a contract with a company, with a person, without knowing what your duties and responsibilities are? We don't do that. But a lot of people, when it comes to marriage, they go and they make sure that they have the hall set up and the dabka band that come and, and they sing for us and they dance for us and the cake and all of these things. But we don't know what responsibilities we have when it's actual time to get married. So this is one. And more importantly, some people they call, Shaykhna, Sayyid, yalla, I want to get divorced now. That's not the job of the Shaykh and the Sayyid. Yes, the job of the Shaykh and the Sayyid and the clergy is to counsel before giving a divorce. You can't just come and give a divorce just for the heck of it. But sometimes you tell them, you know what? You, we have to counsel you. They'll say, okay, bye bye, I'm going to call another Shaykh. I'm going to call another Sayyid. This is what happens. Because some, they think that, yani, they just, they're, they're going to skip this part where counseling is very important, it's very necessary. So families, when a family breaks apart, this causes destruction to the whole community. What, is, what are some of the main purposes of the destruction of a family and the family dynamics? One, my dear brothers and sisters, is the lack of commitment within the relationship. When you, when you get married, you're in a relationship. And in order to keep that relationship healthy, every single member within the relationship, within the family, they have to fulfill their duties and their responsibilities. Right? If you're, for example, working, their job is going to keep you working. As long as you're, you're doing your job, as long as you're doing your, your end of the deal. When it comes to marriage, when it comes to family, a lot of people, they're worried in the beginning, oh, oh I, they ha she has to accept me, or he has to come and propose to me, let me try my best. And then once they're married, the guy is laying on the couch, he's not doing any of the responsibilities, the TV, he's watching TV, and the wife is not doing any of her responsibilities. That means that they gave up on the family. There was a time when they were first newlyweds, they were passionate, they were excited about the relationship. But then, 
as the years pass, 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, whatever, they have children, they started losing that bond and losing that commitment that they had to the family. Now, there's no effort. Now, there's no care. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, is the number one cause of divorce in America. When people lose touch with their loved ones, when they lose that commitment, they don't treat it as if they have a responsibility, as if they have a duty. When you want to go to work, you get up, you take a shower, you're, you prepare yourself and you go to work. But in the first few years when you're married, you start, you know, some people they, they try their best and then later on they don't even give effort in it. That lack of effort will slowly bring the marriage away from its purpose and away from its goal. And the goal is love and tranquility and safety and a feeling of security. So as we mentioned, marriage, it requires a person to be active. You have to be actively involved. Even if you've been married for a very long time, you have to be actively involved and know that you have duties. If you've lost respect for the person you're married to, at least know that you have duties in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people they say, I don't respect my husband anymore. I don't respect my wife anymore. Know that you're at least in a relationship that God is watching. And since God is watching, then you still have to fulfill your end of the deal. You still have to fulfill your duties and your responsibilities. Sometimes people say, yeah, but they're not doing their job. At the, on the day of judgment, Allah is not going to ask me about what this person did and what that person did. Allah is going to ask me, what was your job? What did you do? They are going to be asked, but what's God going to expect from me is what did I do? And we have to be prepared to answer what did we do when it came to, to fulfilling our duties and responsibilities within a relationship? Second, my dear brothers and sisters, we mentioned that the first problem is the lack of commitment. People feel cold. There's sometimes another problem and that is selfishness. Sometimes people know they're committed, but they're only committed for themselves. They're only in it for their own pleasure. They're only in it for their own satisfaction. And this is what a selfish person is. A selfish person doesn't care if the wife is suffering or if the husband is suffering, if the children are suffering. Uh, let me, I want to do what I want to do. She cooks, she cleans, she prepares, she does everything. I want to go every night, I want to sit and smoke my argila and I don't want anyone to talk to me. This is how some are. And it could also be the other way around. Sometimes the husband is working, he's struggling, he's trying to provide for the family and bring the family together. And the wife, she's out doing her own thing as if she's living in another world. This selfishness it ends up destroying the relationship. Sometimes high expectations when one person expects more from the other. Expecting the other person to take on the burden and the responsibility. This is also not fair. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he told Fatima to Zahra when she first got married to Imam Ali, he gave her one piece of advice. And she told that to Amir al-Mu'mineen. Because one day Amir al-Mu'mineen, he comes home and he sees that there's no food. So he tells her, oh Fatima, there's nothing in the house. Why didn't you tell me to bring something? She says, well, there's nothing for me to cook. What am I supposed to cook? He tells her, why didn't you tell I would have went and brought something. She tells him, Oh Ali, I know that you're a loving person, you're a loving father, you're a loving husband. If you have money, you're going to bring. When we first got married, Rasulullah told me, لا تكلفيه ما لا يطيق. Don't hold your husband responsible for something that he can't do. So she says, I know that you would bring. But when I saw that you don't have, I didn't come and tell you because that's going to make it difficult for you. So the hadith says, Amir al-Mu'mineen, he left the house and he went and he borrowed. He borrowed a dirham to bring back food for the family. To bring back food for the family. And there's an ending to this, of course. On his way back, when he's coming back home, he sees one of, his compa one of the companions of Rasulullah, Al-Miqdad ibn al-Aswad. He's also out in the street looking for something to bring. 
Amir al-Mu'min tells him, what's wrong with you? What, what are you doing out in the street at this time? He tells him, I left the house and my children are crying out of hunger. So Amir al muminin he takes the dirham that he borrowed and he gives it to that person, Al-Maqdad ibn al-Aswad. And he says, my family, they're used to giving away to the poor and giving to those who are in need. He goes home and he sees Fatima al-Zahra is in the mihrab and there's a tray of food in front of her and Rasulullah is standing there. So he tells her, oh Fatima, where is this from? Rasulullah, he smiles and he tells him, oh Ali, it was not only Maryam that food was brought to her from the heavens. Fatima is no less than Maryam. And Allah brings the food from the heavens to her. But the point of this is that Fatima Zahra, in the beginning, she did not expect from Amir al Mu'mineen, La tuhammalih ma la yutiq. So, this is a very important issue. And even, you know, sometimes you find one person is selfish in the relationship, the other person is quiet, they don't say anything. Just because they're quiet, that doesn't mean God is not watching. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. If there's oppression within the family, Allah will hold the, pers- the oppressor accountable. Oppression isn't something that just takes place with the kings and the presidents and the tyrants. No, sometimes oppression takes place within a family. This is why one of the companions of Rasulullah, Sa'd ibn Ma'adh, he was injured in one of the battles. They brought him back to Medina and Rasulullah participated in his funeral. And all of the Muslims they attended, Rasulullah buried him. His mother, she comes and she stands over the grave and she says, Congratulations, you're going straight to paradise. Rasulullah looked at her. He tells her, Oh mother of Sa'd, don't give out paradise on behalf of Allah because now his body is being crushed. They say the reason for that was because he had bad manners with his own family. Maybe he was good with others. He was a, such a high believer where the Prophet participated in his funeral. The Muslims participated in his funeral. The hadith says that the angels participated in his funeral. Rasulullah was walking on his tiptoes in the, in the funeral. They asked him why, he said because of the angels. But he's going to heaven, but he's going to have to pay the price for his manners and whatever he had with his family. So this is second. We said lack of commitment. We said selfishness. And third, liars, lying to one another and being unfaithful to one another. This is one of the things that destroys relationships. Any relationship, whether it's with your friends, the children with the parents, parents with one another, business, any, any relationship. If it's based on lies, this relationship will not last long. Yes, the liar, sometimes they think that they're fooling other people, but eventually they get caught. Eventually they get caught and that relationship will be hurt. Because trust is the most important thing in any relationship. If you have a relationship with anyone, you're, you're going to want, have to trust this person for the relationship to carry on. If you don't trust this person, how far is this relationship going to go? And lying is one of the worst sins. إِنَّمَا يَفْتَرِ الْكَذِبَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَاذِبُونَ the, the ones who lie, they are the ones who do not believe in the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they reject the signs of Allah. And there's a hadith that says that the key, the beginning of every fault is lying. Every sin, miftah. The, the key to every sin and act of disobedience is lying. Because you're going to have to lie. If you've done anything wrong, you're going to have to lie. But if you don't lie, then you're not going to do anything wrong. The one who lies, because they try to get themselves out of the problem. So when it comes to family, when it comes to relationships, loyalty and being faithful is very important. Being honest, saying the truth. Sometimes, some they lie over simple things. Over petty issues they lie. I've seen sometimes when I 
you know, talk to some couples. No, she, she lies a simple lie here and there. He says one simple lie here and there, and then slowly they both stop. They both stop trusting one another. That's it. There's no more trust. And then if there's no more trust, the relationship falls apart. Another very important reason for the breakup of families and relationships is anger. So we said lack of commitment, selfishness, lying and unfaithful, and fourth, anger. When a person is constantly angry, some people, they can't have one conversation. As soon as they start talking to one another, suddenly they start yelling at one another. This person yells and that person yells. That will destroy any relationship. Anger, not only will it destroy relationships, it will destroy your health. It will destroy your own health. You find that the people who are angry, they have blood pressure, they have heart disease, they have problems. Because you're going to destroy your own health when you are angry. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, so we said it re destroys relationships, it destroys your health, and it destroys the iman, it destroys the faith. Rasulullah Ghadab, anger, destroys iman and faith just as vinegar destroys the honey. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Salaamu alaykum. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. In another hadith from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, Maktubun fi al-Tawrat fi ma naja Allah azza wa jal bihi Musa alayhi salam. It's written in the Tawrat. God told Moses, Ya Musa, amsik ghadabaka amman malakta alayk alayh a kuffu anka ghadabi. He says, Allah tells Musa, control your anger from those who you have authority over. So, for example, if the father in the house or the mother or someone who's in charge, any, anyone who's in a position of leadership, control your anger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will. Not treat this person angrily. And Luqman tells his son, Ya Bunay, Amlik, Ya Bunay, Imlik Nafsaka and Al Ghadab, Hatta La Takuna Li Jahanna Mahataba. Control yourself during the times of anger so that you will not be fuel in the hellfire. You will fuel the hellfire if you are angry. And this is what anger does when someone's angry. That anger fuels the fight. It makes it even more. You try to find a solution, but you end up getting, making it even worse because of the anger, because of the temper and not controlling yourself. So this is why there are tips to control a person's anger. You control your anger by, for example, getting up and doing wudu. Control your anger by getting up and praying two rak'ah prayers. These are all ways that we can control our anger. And the fifth and the final problem that we are mentioning, the final reason for the, for the families breaking apart, one of the things that I've noticed is when relationships, people in the relationship, they constantly compare their relationship with others. They compare their house with others, my car with others. Well, oh, look at her husband, he did this. this his wife, she did this. They keep comparing. And that is something that ends up destroying relationships. Don't look at what other people have. If you're going to constantly look at what other people have, you're not going to keep any pleasure for yourself. Because all, there's always someone who's going to have something better than what you have. And if you're always going to be looking at what other people have, then you're not going to find any happiness in life. Be happy with what you have. Be, be happy, be content with the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, say Alhamdulillah. Praise Allah for the blessings. Allah says in the Quran, لا تمدن عينيك إلى ما متعنا به أزواجا منهم زهرة الحياة الدنيا لنفتنهم فيه ورزق ربك خير وأبقى Don't stretch your eyes because they're being tested with it. Allah, what, what Allah has given you is better for you. And Rasulullah says, مَن نَظَرَ إِلَى مَا فِي أَيْدِ النَّاسِ طَالَ حُزْنُهُ وَدَامَ أَسَفُهُ The one who's always looking at what's in the hands of others, they're always going to be sad. Because you're always not going to have what everyone else has. And you're never going to be 
satisfied. These are some of the causes of the destruction of families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all and to bless all of the families. Before I conclude, there is going to be a drive-by fundraising. Uh, due to the pandemic, the AICC is holding a drive through fundraising Sunday, December 13th. My dear brothers and sisters, this masjid is, they're, they're planning on, on uh, building a masjid and you all know where the land is and this is something that is for the good of the whole community, of the whole Muslim community. So everyone should try to chip in as much as you can. Do whatever you can, anything that you can help. So this time, Sunday, December 13th, 2020, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And you could also send your checks via PayPal or um, via um, writing a check to AICC and drop it off. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi al-tahireen. Salli ala...